IIS is the acronym for what Microsoft calls Internet Information Services, which many, many, many years ago was called Internet Information Server. Whatever it's called in the past or in the future, it is the software system that allows websites to actually operate on the Microsoft platform. And so when people are creating websites using, um, let's say, ASP.NET, they often deploy ASP.NET project solutions or their results to Internet Information Services. And they put it in a place called a uh, virtual directory. And this virtual directory is configured in such a way that it's going to allow the server to deliver web files to people's web browsers. Well, the thing is, is that like many topics in putting a software application together, the thought is you need a high-end computer in order to develop web applications. Turns out that's not exactly true. And we go back to, let's say, the early 2000s, we had a tool called Personal Web Server by Microsoft as well. And if you compare that Personal Web Server technology, which worked very well with another tool called Microsoft Front Page, you were able to put websites together and test them out on your local computer with great ease. And when you compare those computers to the ones we have now, um, in comparison, those computers were much slower, and yet you were able to do full-on internet technology at that time. And so, again, the core of the technology, the, the foundation is there to do things that we today may use um, higher-end more um, robust computers to accomplish. But in this particular take, I don't dis demonstrate any of that. Um, the, the very first uh, objective is to see, can we even install Internet Information Services, IIS, on a low-end computer? And of course the answer to that is yes, but what does that look like? Is it, um, does it pre present any challenges? Is that a favorable situation? And so as I go through this process of putting conventional IIS on the computer, um, the results are very revealing. Internet Information Services has been around a good while and where previously you had to download a setup program to get it integrated with your computer, uh, since Windows Vista, I believe, it's part of the control panel. So you go into the control panel and you select um, the option to install um, or turn on Windows features. And when you go in there, you'll see an option for Internet Information Services. You could check that box and click OK and uh, everything would be in place, but I like to go in and select the specific options that I need for Internet Information Services. And by skipping the option to install the Internet Information Services service specifically, I avoid a security issue on a personal computer because that particular option allows administrators, web developers, etc., to be able to remotely access um, IIS or Internet Information Services on a server. And in a corporate setting, in a IT setting, that works just fine. But um, on a personal computer, that's not something that you need because you're right there and you can directly access this service. So I clicked OK, and that prompted Windows to install IIS. And once that's installed, you will have that web application service integrated into Windows. So that means if you're using Visual Studio or other web ed editors, web development tools, you now have 
the ability to test out those web development those web developed files on your local computer to simulate a full website and so this is just one component of, an, of the tool set that you need to develop web applications. So far so good in the screen that we're on we don't see the icon for IIS so we refresh so that we can see the icon and I believe that's the same icon art since in Windows NT 4.51 or thereabouts. So as you can see um, Internet Information Services um, has an icon that we can access through the start menu and I've pinned it to the start menu so that I could launch it um, conveniently and um, once it loads we can explore uh, some of the features of IAS at a high level so there's the sites node you drill down and you see the default website and so any web application that you develop on this particular machine, on this computer, um, if they're listed under that default website, then you're good to go. As you can see, everything worked just well on this Pentium-based computer.